Hi everyone, this is a tutorial on how you will export your Adobe Illustrator file into a Photoshop file and then save your file as a GIF animation. So in class I talked to you all about making a base layer for your map. Any part of your map that isn't actually going to animate should be on the very lower layer in your Illustrator document. So the very first example I have here, I've got some buildings and I've also got the start of a pathway that I'm going to form. So on each form on top of the base layer, I've duplicated the circle that's part of the path and moved it a little bit. So as each layer is revealed, you get another piece of the animation. Now when I export this to Photoshop, anything that I have visible will automatically be converted into a layer in Photoshop. So it's really important that each part of my animation is put on a separate layer so I know um, so it gets put into the layer and it can properly animate in Photoshop. The second example, I have um, the same concept, a path that's being formed. Uh, the difference is I've got nothing that starts the path on the base layer. So the first part first part of the path gets added with the layer 2 and then as I make each layer visible you get more of the path. So this is probably one of the more simple kind of animations. For this third example, I'm going to pretend that this structure is a smokestack and I'm going to make smoke come out of it. So once again, like in the second example, there's nothing on this part of the map to start the animation. The very first animation layer has a shape and as I reveal the layers on top, the shape grows and makes this geometric looking plume of smoke. So you can go through and see how that gets made. With the fourth example, I'm going to try using the blend tool. The blend tool allows me to choose two shapes and have them blend together. Um, so I'm going to choose these two shapes. I've got a star and then I've got a pentagon. And I'm going to go over to the blend tool on my toolbar. If I double click on it, I get this window that pops up and I can choose specified steps. And this will make the transition um, between the two shapes according to whatever number of steps I specify. Now I have 11 animation layers. I'm starting out with two shapes already so I'm going to have nine shapes, um, nine steps between the two shapes. So it should give me nine additional shapes. So I'm going to press OK. And then I'm going to move. So I'm going to start with the first shape, which is going to be the star. Click on it once, then move to the second shape. And the transition between the two shapes gets built automatically.
from here, you can see that these are all linked together. So like with a lot of other things we do in Illustrator, I have to expand it. So I'm going to go up to Object, go down to Expand, click OK, and now it's um, broken up the group so I can edit them individually. They're still grouped together. I'm going to do Shift Command G to ungroup them. And so now I have the individual shapes. To build this animation, I'm going to just cut and paste each shape into the layer I want it to go in. So the pentagon is the last shape that's going to appear in the animation. So I'm going to do Command X to cut it and I'm going to put it in the very last layer, which is layer 12, and then do Command F to show it first, and then Command F to paste it into that layer. I'm just going to go through and do the same thing with each one of these shapes. Alright, this is the last one. So now each of these shapes is on a separate layer. They're, all the layers have its own color, so just by rolling over it I can see that each of these is on a different layer. And if I start with the base layer and just start adding the shapes on one another, you can see the transition. So that's how you can use the blend tool to create a transition between your um, any shapes or different colors in your animation. And this last example is just to remind you that if you have text, you'll need to put it in your base layer. So I'm going to hide all the other layers. This text. Like I said, it's on the base layer. I'm going to convert it to outlines before I bring it into Photoshop. And the reason I'm going to do this is because um, when I bring it into Photoshop, it'll still be edit editable text. Since I'm exporting it and just dealing with the animation, it'll make the file size smaller and the transition from one program to the other easier if Photoshop doesn't have to think about any any fonts. So I've selected the type. I'm going to go to the type menu and create outlines and that's all I have to do. You could also um, use create outlines to break up the text and make that animate if you want. Um, all you have to do is ungroup the text And you could actually select different letters, have them be revealed one at a time. You could have them move um, as the animation progresses. You could do all kinds of things. But the main idea is, especially body text, it needs to be in the base layer. So before I export this to Photoshop, I'm going to make sure all my layers are revealed. I'm going to make sure I don't have any transparency. Um, for some reason, if I have transparency, let's say that I have this, um, this shape on the structure selected and I make it, um, let's say, 50% opacity and have an overlay filter on it. 
for some reason, Photoshop won't really let you take the layers and put them into a Photoshop file if you have transparencies like this in Illustrator. So if you have transparency like this, um, you might have to find a way to fake it in the animation file you make in Illustrator. Um, it's just, it's not going to work. All of your layers are going to get put together into one layer and you won't be able to animate. So just make sure all of your um, opacities and transparencies are at 100% and normal. Now I did mention earlier that you need to rasterize things. Um, it turns out that it should work fine if you don't rasterize. Um, you can try putting it into Photoshop, see if the file size is too large. If it is too large, then you can go back and try to rasterize, but I think for the most part you all should be okay without having to rasterize anything. So I've got all my layers turned on, and just to kind of put everything in the same kind of situation you have, I'm going to fill up this whole map area with um, my houses. So I'm just going to duplicate them all the way around, all the way down. So there's animation happening in all parts of the map. And I'm going to save this file. Um, I'm actually going to save it as as an animation. So I know it's separate from my original Illustrator file. Like I've said before, you don't want to change anything for the animation in your very first Illustrator file because something may go wrong and you'll be without your original. So make sure you're saving a separate copy for the animation. Once I've done that, I'm ready to export to Photoshop. So I'm going to go to File and Export. And under Format, I'm going to choose Photoshop, and it has the extension PSD. And I'm going to select Use Artboards. Even if you only have one artboard, go ahead and select this because it should crop down your, um, your map to the actual artboard size. If you don't select artboards, it'll include everything that's on your document, even little stray pieces of artwork that you don't really want to have part of your map. So choose artboards and then choose the number of your artboard, which if you only have one, it'll be artboard number one. And then click export. Make sure the color model is RGB, resolution is 72 pixels per inch. Make sure right layers is selected and maximum edit editability is also selected. And then press OK. So when that is done, you should be able to go to your Photoshop document that was just saved and open it in Photoshop. I'm going to start from a blank slate so you guys can see what I'm doing. So when I open up my layers window in Photoshop, you can see each layer has been translated from Illustrator into Photoshop. And the base layer includes the, the main artwork for the map. So to start off, I'm going to um, make all the other layers invisible except for my base layer. And I'm going to bring up the animation panel and go to Window and Animation. And by default, whatever I have revealed in my window gets put into the first animation frame. With each animation frame, there's a drop-down menu. I can choose what the delay is going to be. 
Zero seconds is really fast. Um, obviously, the longer the delay, the more time your animation will spend on each frame. I think 0.2 or 0.5 is a good place to start, um, unless you're just having some really rapid animations. So I'm going to start with 0.2, and whatever delay I put down here initially, it's going to automatically replicate that with each new frame I create. So the base layer, the beginning of my animation is on frame one. And I'm going to do, I'm going to first start do an additive type of animation. So everything in the animation is just getting added on top of one another. So to do that, I'm going to make a new frame, go down to this um, button here, it says duplicate selected frames. And the second frame, I'll bring up layer two, duplicate again, layer three, layer four and frame four, and so on. And this is where numbering your layers really comes in handy. All I have to do is look at the layer number and the, the frame number corresponds with the layer. So now I've got a frame for each layer. If I go back to the beginning and I press the play button down here, I can see how the animations play out. And it'll just loop by default. Now let's say I wanted the animation to loop backwards but go back to the beginning. To do that I just work backwards. I'm going to make a new frame and with each new frame I'm going to hide a layer. All right, so now when I play it back, you'll see things being revealed and then taken away. I'll go back to the beginning. So this is the additive type of animation. Every time I reveal a layer, that layer stays exposed and you see the animation get added on top of it. The second way to do an animation would be more subtractive. But I'm going to actually go ahead and save this animation before I show the second type. So to save this, I go up to File and Save for Web and Devices. And make sure that the file type is a GIF. And here in the lower left-hand corner of the preview, it'll tell me how big the file is and how quickly the file will load at different internet speeds. So if you want to see how fast it'll load um, via cable, you can select that. It'll tell you how many seconds it'll take. The main thing you want to look at is this file size. There are some things that you can change to make this, the file smaller or larger. The first thing I suggest you look at is this transparency option. If you deselect it, anything that's transparent will be changed to white. So you can see there, were, there was a little bit of a bleed here and that got changed to white. But it also increased my file size to over a meg, which is which is not horribly big, but it's too big for um, 
what we would like to do with it. So I'm going to select transparency and it brought the the file size under 200 kilobytes which is a pretty good size. The second thing you can try is limiting the amount of colors. By default it will be 256. If you are okay with some of the colors being um, diminished you can lower the amount of colors. Sometimes it'll make it look more pixelated because the transition between two colors is eliminated. But if you're okay with that and for the most part your colors are retained, then um, you can try that as well. And you can see that that took off about 40 kilobytes from my file size by doing that. But since my, my, file, my original file size isn't too large, I'm just going to leave it. You can also test out your animation if you click play animation down here in the lower right corner so you can see what it looks like. When everything is the way uh, you want it, just press save and name your animation. And then when you go and preview it, either in, um, in the Mac operating system or in a web browser, you can see the animation. All right, so then the second animation type. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and save my Photoshop file since I've been um, making some changes. I'm going to go back and delete these previous frames and start over. So I simply select one frame, I can hold down shift and select the last one and that selects um, all the ones I want. And then I'm going to press the trash can icon to delete the frames. So I'm back at the base layer of the map. I'm going to add a new frame and I'm going to add, um, or sorry, reveal layer 2. Now this time when I add frame 3, instead of leaving frame 2 up, I'm going to hide it and show layer 3. With layer 4, I'm going to hide layer 3 and show layer 4. And I'll just do that. All the way across. Okay, so now I've done that for all of the layers. With each frame instance, I have the base layer shown and then one other layer. So when I play this through, you've just got one shape from each type of animation moving across. So if you have something like a person walking or cars moving, this would be the way you would want to animate it. It also works well for this animation with the smoke because you don't have this, you don't see any of the shapes underneath. It's really um, a lot more smooth than it was with the previous animation. So I'm going to do what I did the last time. I'm going to have it go in reverse so it loops seamlessly.
All right, let's see what this looks like. Now something I've noticed, especially with this last one, I'm not sure if I want it to disappear at the end. And the reason that's happening is because the very first frame has nothing in it. So if I want to, I could delete that frame and have it start with this very first animation. So now these shapes never disappear. But everything else looks good, so I'm going to go ahead and do save for web and devices and do the same thing I did before. So I'm looking at the file size. This one is a little bit larger than the last one. And I'm going to make sure everything looks good. Just to see how it looks, I'm going to decrease the amount of colors to 64 so we can compare. And it did make the file size smaller. So then I'm going to save it, make it animation 2. And so now when I look at it in preview, I see the, the other type of animation. So those are the two types of animation you can do. Um, hopefully that helps explain the transition from Illustrator to Photoshop to Animated GIF a bit more. If you have any other questions, feel free to email me. Um, my email is ashley.hairston at mtsu.edu. Thanks.